Hello everyone and a warm welcome to the teaching show. Uh, in this video, I am going to take yet another problem of uh, recycle with purge. So let's get started. So this problem I have taken from Hemelblau and uh, the problem is something like this. A reaction of uh, CO with hydrogen is taking place in order to produce methanol. It is taking place in a reactor. The fresh feed to the reactor composition is given. Okay. The only thing is now is that um, the reactants are hydrogen and carbon monoxide but along with it some amount of methane is also going in. So I have directly marked methane as inert because it is not taking part in the reaction. So it is safe to take it as an inert. Okay. So uh, it's marked by I and its concentration is 0.2%. Then this uh, fresh feed it combines with the recycled stream and goes to the reactor. Here 18% conversion takes place. The reactor effluent stream goes into a separator where methanol is completely separated and the stream which comes out is split into two portions. One is sent as a recycle and the other uh, small stream it is purged out. Okay, So this purge is done mainly in order to avoid the buildup of inerts because inerts do not find their way out with the product stream. So they will tend to build up in this recycle loop. Okay, So that's why uh, you are trying to uh, draw a purge stream. Okay. Now, some things have been given. First of all, the composition of the fresh feed is given. Third thing, uh, second thing, the 18% conversion in the reactor is given. And third specification is given that the uh, outlet from this separator, it cannot have more than 3.2% of inert. Okay. So, we know the concentration of inerts in the uh, in this stream and since this stream splits into two so the concentration in all these three streams will be the same okay so that's why i have marked the concentration of inert in the purge stream and the recycle stream same as that of the stream that is 3.2 percent okay now i have just uh, drawn a fully labeled flowchart for you uh, first step is to select the basis so the only stream for which we know the composition fully that is your fresh feed stream so we will choose this as the basis so let's take 100 moles of it as soon as i fix uh, 100 moles of this then these percentages i can write directly write it as moles okay so 67.3 moles of hydrogen is going in 32.5 moles of carbon monoxide and inerts which are going in uh, are 0.2 excuse me 0.2 moles okay uh, then I have marked all this fine and over here I just keep this in mind that the summation of all the fractions small fractions it is 1 so that's why I if I calculate xh then I know what is the mole fraction of carbon monoxide okay so that will be 1 minus 0 0.032 minus xh or it will be 0 0.968 minus xh so I know this thing okay uh, now what I have told you is that when you are selecting your fresh feed as the basis, always first try to take a balance on the overall system. So we will first go and check our degree of freedom on the entire system. Let's do that and we will use extent of reaction to solve this problem. So I am going to use extent of reaction. So let me check the degree of freedom for this method. How many uh, unknowns I have? M4, M5 and XH. So I have three unknowns. How many reactions? Plus one. Okay. How many um, independent species balance I can write? I have uh, how many reactive species over here? Oh, th th those that are taking part in the reaction. One, two and three. So I have three of those equations. And then I have one inert balance. Okay. So I can write one inert balance. So my degree of freedom is 0. So I am going to start from the overall system. Let's do that right away. Okay. So let's write down. First of all I told you whenever such a problem is given. If there is a process specification you try to use that first. Maybe like we had done overall conversion uh, was given. Then we started with the overall conversion. But right now what we will do. We will start with our inert balance. Okay. So I will take inert balance first. So whatever is going in should be coming out in order to maintain steady state in the system. Okay. What is going in that is equal to 0 0.2. That should be equal to what is coming out. That is 0 0.032 times N5. 
So one equation, one unknown, simply it solves to give you N5 that is equal to 6.25 moles. Okay, so I have got the value of N5. Now I will proceed and write down the three equations for these three reacting components in terms of my extent of reaction. Okay, so let's first write down for methanol uh, the final amount which is coming out that is N4 that should be equal to what is going in. Nothing is going in. 0 plus stoichiometric coefficient times zeta. Okay, now I am going to write for hydrogen. So how much hydrogen is going out that is equal to X, H times N5. N5 is 6.25. So I have uh, 6.25 times uh, XH. That is equal to how much is going in? 67.3. What is the stoichiometric coefficient? Minus 2 times zeta. Okay. And then I am going to write for carbon. Okay. Oh, sorry, carbon monoxide. So that will be equal to what is coming out? Uh, 0 0.968. Minus XH times 6.25 that is what is coming out and that should be equal to what is going in 32.5 minus 1 is the stoichiometric coefficient minus zeta. Okay. So now what you have got is that these two equations there are two equations in two unknowns XH and zeta. Okay. So I can solve them simultaneously. If I solve them simultaneously, I will get the value of zeta and xh. So let's do that. These two when combined together, okay, that gives me a value of zeta is equal to 31.25 moles. And my xh that comes out to be 0 0.768. Okay. So I have these two values. Now N4 is equal to zeta. So N4 will be equal to 31.25. So I have got three values from here. What are they? This is 31.25 moles. This is uh, 0 0.768. Okay. Now this is what is left is I will just subtract. And I get the value of the mole fraction of carbon monoxide as 0 0.2. Over here also. I will update this. So now I know the mole fraction of the purge stream and the recycle stream. I know how much purge stream which is coming out. That is 6.25 moles. Okay. So uh, one part is done in this problem. Now we will proceed. If I just go and check my degree of freedom on the reactor. Or that, for that matter at this point. Uh, mixing point. Or for the separator. Okay. It's very difficult to solve. You check the degree of freedom and find it out on your own. But what we will do in this problem is that, like we had done before, if I check my degree of freedom on this combined system of your mixing point plus the reactor, it comes out to be zero. Let's do that and find out. Okay. So my degree of freedom analysis, let's do that. Um, for extent of reaction, how many uh, variables do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So I have 5 variables, unknowns which I have to find out. There is one reaction which is taking place. How many uh, reactive species are there? 3. So I can write 3 equations. Then I have one inert. Then I have one process specification that is 18% conversion. So minus 1. And I have one more information now. In this step, when we were solving on the overall system, we had calculated our value of zeta for this reaction. That was 31.25 moles. So I told you in one of the previous videos that the zeta, if you calculate for the overall system, that remains the same for the reactor as well. Okay, so when I am taking a balance on this reactor plus my mixing point, see zeta it does not depend on where you are taking a balance. One it is, once it is fixed, it is fixed. Okay, so it is going to remain the same. So for this calculation, I know one more thing. What is that? That is zeta and we had calculated that, that while taking the overall balance. So I know zeta. Okay, so now my degree of freedom has reduced to zero. Okay, so I can go and solve on this. And find out all the things. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, from where will we start? 
Okay, let's write down these three balances first. Okay, so I'm going to write N6 uh, which is coming out. That should be equal to the hydrogen which is going in. How much is going in? 67.3 plus this stream is also going in. Okay, so hydrogen in the recycle stream that should be equal to 0 0.768 times NR. That is what is going in. Okay. So out that should be equal to a final number of moles that is equal to the initial number of moles plus your mu into zeta. For hydrogen your mu is minus 2. So minus 2 times zeta. Okay. Now I have N7. N7 will be equal to N7 is equal to uh, again uh, what is going in? Going in is 32.5 and uh, from here it is 0.2 times nr okay so i'm going to write that 32.5 just excuse me i will change the pen so this is 32.5 which is going in from with this stream plus what is going with the recycle stream and that is equal to 0 0.2 times nr and plus new zeta new is minus 1 zeta okay so i have these two equations let's write for methanol N8 that is equal to what is going in? Nothing. So 0 plus zeta. So N8 is directly equal to zeta that is equal to 31.25 moles. So I am going to write it over here. 31.25 moles. We have calculated one thing. Now what you will observe is that you are left with two equations which are in uh, how many variables? 3. Zeta we know from this. Okay. Uh, this is calculated. Okay. So, zeta we know. N6, N7 and NR. All three of them are unknown quantities. So, we will make use of one fact which is what? 18% conversion on the reactor. Okay. Let's understand this. First of all, you have to find out 18% conversion of what we are talking. So, we have to find out what is the limiting reactant. If it is not given in the problem that they, it, that they are talking about 18% conversion of either CO or H2, then you base it on the limiting reactant. Okay. So, in this problem, it is not specified what conversion they are talking about. So, let's find out what is the limiting reactant. Okay. So, uh, let's see over here. 1 mole of CO requires 2 mole of hydrogen. So, 32.5 moles of CO will require stoichiometrically 65 moles of hydrogen. But hydrogen is more than 65 moles. That means your hydrogen is in excess and carbon monoxide is the limiting reactant. Okay. So, that means that 18% of we are saying that 18% of carbon monoxide gets converted and 82% comes out unreacted. So, this N7 is basically 82% of what is going in. So, N7 is basically 82% that is 0 0.82 times what is going in that is 32.5 plus 0 0.2 NR. Okay. So, we have used this condition 18% conversion. Now, for now I will just forget this part of my equation. I have this simple equation zeta I know. It is one equation in un one unknown. I will solve it for the NR value, okay, and find that value. So, NR, it comes out to be, value is, uh, let me see, it is 705.86 moles. So, once I have NR, now I can forget that part of my uh, equation. Just use this much. You know NR, you know zeta. Quickly go and calculate your N7. So, your N7, it comes out to be 142.36 moles. And similarly, if I put my value of zeta and nr over here, I can also calculate n6 and n6 comes out to be 546.67. Okay. So, the only thing which remains now is my n9 value that is the inert. It's very simple. Take inert balance. Inert balance will take the form of n is equal to out because it is not taking part in the reaction. What is in? 0 0.2 moles is going in plus... Uh, what is this fraction? Okay, 0 0.032 times NR and that should be equal to your N9. I know what is the value of NR. So, I will be able to calculate my N9 and it comes out to be 22.78 moles. 
So now I have got my balanced flow sheet for this problem. I have the molar flow rates and composition of all the streams. Now you can answer whatever question they ask you. Uh, in this problem it was asked what is the molar flow rate of the pulse stream, what is the molar flow rate of the product stream and what is the recycle ratio. What will be the recycle ratio? NR divided by 100. So it will be 7.05. So this problem is solved. I hope you understood the problem and if you really find this uh, video helpful then hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel and thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.